Welcome to the Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together we are the, the Traveling, Traveling Professors. Professors. Today Sherry and I are going to take you on a tour of the treasure of Mycenae that is found in the Archaeological Museum in Athens. Now it was originally discovered in 1876 by Heinrich Schliemann. He's the one who discovered the royal tombs. He began excavating at Mycenae in 1874. However, the site had been previously worked on, at least the Lion's Gate section, the entrance into it, had worked on by Greek archaeologists. Here is where you find the burial sites. This is known as Circle A or Grave Circle A. There are 19 people that were buried in this location. Eight of them men, nine of them women, and two of them children. They were buried in six large rectangular pits, three meters by three and a half meters, and grave four is four and a half meters by 6.4 meters. Each individual was buried at the bottom of a pit, covered with stone slabs or reeds and weeds. The dugout soil was then placed over the top, and then there were upright steles that were put in place to mark those burials. And if another person was added to the burial, they would remove the stele, put the next person in, and then put a new one in place and set the others back up. Now, the dead were fully clothed and adorned with golden masks. And later on, I will show you that this is not the only area of Greece that did this. But it is quite stunning. More than 23 pounds of material was found in this site. Now, here is the entrance to the Archaeological Museum in Athens. And once you go inside, you'll notice on this chart, here is the area where you're going to find the Mycenaean treasure. Basically, this is a vault. Once you walk in and you look at the doors behind you, they are gigantic like vaults that you would find in a bank. And another time we'll go back and see some of the other sections of the museum as well. But here we come to the first case. And in this case, you see these gold masks. Those big round eyes and that little adorable smile makes me actually want to know this person. This little adorable person is one of the, the men who was buried in his uh, in his grave. Not that this was put over the person's head and then, you know, banged on to make it fit him. Uh, it's a stylized view. But each one of the individuals had a golden mask. Now, this is the one that is referred to as the Mask of Agamemnon. And it, it is quite stunning. And, of course, when these tombs were opened, Schliemann removed the masks off each one of the heads and the bodies then disintegrated in the dust. And the one that had this mask on it lasted longer. And that's responsible for the telegram of Schliemann to the king of Greece saying that I have gazed upon the face of Agamemnon. But it's spectacular. And then here's a picture of how big it is in comparison to a person actually holding it in their hand. This is one of the technicians that was cleaning it. Then we see uh, one of the uh, dagger blades with the gold inlay. And then you go from case to case in the, uh, in the museum. The next case, we've got another set of, of heads in it. Two of these are relatively flat. Here's one where it's, it's almost flat, but it does, it does come up a little. Then we have another one of the gentlemen here with a round face. It looks like he has his eyes open. Actually, the eyes are considered closed. At least that's what the guide said. And then here's a, another individual. You can see the face and the ears. And it's, again, a little bit flattened out. You would have, once you removed these, you would have found uh, little gold plates over their eyes and their mouths as well. Here's a shot of myself taking a picture of my daughter looking on. Sherry is over at another one of the cases. And then we come to this next case. And you'll see two things back part of it. The first one is this bull with the horns. Believe it or not, that is a riton. A riton is an ancient Greek drinking vessel, typically in the form of an animal's head. Or it's just a horn. And there's a hole at the bottom of it that you're supposed to drink out of. Sometimes these are used for ceremonial purposes. This bull's riton is gold with silver. So it's, it's what's dark is, is made out of silver. And then the next one is the panther or the lion's head riton. Ah, uh, another favorite piece. I'll bet I took 10 pictures of this beautiful piece. It just captured my heart. 
I grew up with National Geographic magazine. It was a hand-me-down from my mom's boss, my window into places to dream about. But I had no idea of the plethora of gold in this spine. The articles just never did it justice. Well, let's get up close and personal with this plethora of gold. This display has some of the most spectacular cups and goblets that, of the whole collection. And then here you can see two shelves of them. But let's get a little closer because on the, on the top shelf on one side, you have these two magnificent drinking cups with the hunting scene on the sides of them. And you can, it's nice to be able to see them all the way around in the display. And then here we have one of the probably cruder of the gold cups, and it's really kind of embarrassing to say that there's a cruder gold cup, but in comparison to the the two with the hunting scene, it certainly is a, a little bit different. And then again, you go to another case, and we have bronze and silver uh, urns and cooking vessels, and then we start getting to a mix of displays. This one has some of the bronze swords in it, one of them with a gold handle. And here's a close-up of another one of the masks that was on the face of one of the men that was buried. Then we go to the next case, and we see the long swords. We see bits of jewelry that would have been on their, their chests and pottery and spear points. Here's a closer view of the, uh, the gold sword sword blade and these are really long some of these blades are 32 plus inches in length then we come to this display where we have the bronze weapons and all basically one piece where you would just wrap the handle some of them are a little shorter than others and you can see in the case you have the solid gold handle the downside with the solid gold handle is Obviously, it's it's plated over the outside of the of the bronze because gold is very soft. So if you were to swing that, that would twist in your hand. But of course, covering it for ceremonial purposes is a different thing. And then here's a closer view of some of the solid bronze uh, short swords, and they would have probably had a wrapped leather uh, handle on them, and that has of course disappeared long ago. Here's a dagger. Say the blade has animals on the on the blade piece, and then we have a display that shows again bronze swords, short swords. Uh, then they have axe heads. Um, you even see some hooks on on one of them. Then we come to the cases with the jewelry. Now, this is just absolutely amazing. Now we come to the ring, the signet rings, hair rings, all sorts of things. In this picture, we see two of these rings. One of them depicts a man and his chariot driver hunting. The one above it has two very large figures fighting each other. One of them has what is known as a tower shield. Basically goes from your ankle up to your shoulders. This depicts what could be very well a battle between Achilles and Hector. Next to it is the type of armor that you would have found on Mycenaean charioteers. Now this was not found in the tomb. That type of armor was found in another Mycenaean burial, but not at Mycenae. And then we have some of the different types of rings with different types of scenes on them. Some of them are just decoration. Some of them are scenes like the others. Then we come to this two-handed drinking goblet. This is a close-up view of the drinking goblet and a nice silver statue, probably a goddess or something. Oh, the jewelry. Tiny rosettes and swirls and chains and earrings. I'd wear these today. Actually, I would wear them anywhere today. I love shiny things. The parade of gold continues. Here we have a, a whole case of, of smaller objects, although the object in the middle is noted as a diadem with these other pieces, and that would have gone over the head and then laid out back behind. Then we have a case where we have continued to have these very, very flat pieces, which are very typical uh, for uh, votive offerings or burial offerings. In the center of this case, we see 
two figures in small pieces. And this is a closer view of those two men, if you will, or ladies. Then we come to another case of these spectacular two-handed goblets. Certainly the wine flowed freely at these events where they were used. This is a closer view of the one in the lower level. And then we start getting into some of the jewelry. And here we have a whole series of necklaces, large ones, small ones. But you see what looks like uh, almost a chrysanthemum chrysanthemum style, although that's very Minoan, and they could have very well copied that as well. Here's a little closer view. And then we have another case with a, a beautiful cup. And then we have, you have all of these different things that would have been on clothing, probably sewn onto the clothing. The clothing has since deteriorated. And we have the buttons and we have the emblems that were on the clothing. And then we have a section that's just kind of miscellaneous objects. Now, for a long time, people were, you know, pretty much just aware of this. However, we went to the Pella Archaeological Museum in northern Greece. Inside the museum, they have all of the objects that have been found in the region of the museum at Pella, which this museum is located on the site of ancient Pella. Between, if you go up to one side, you have the palace area. If you go down the other direction, you have the rest of the city of Pella. Now, the palace area is somewhat damaged. We'll take a tour of it at another time. But inside that, on the second floor, they had a whole group of the same thing that you found in Mycenae. They had groups of noble warriors and princesses. So here is a, a picture of one of the burials of one individual. And there's the, the armored, you know, his mask over his helmet and then all of the other gold. If he would have removed the helmet from his face, they would have had gold circles over the eyes and a gold mouthpiece as well. And then in the other case, there's an example of two princesses and their jewelry and objects that were placed in the burials with them. And there are 15 of these in there. And it is it is just stunning as what we saw at Mycenae, but they're very close. But this indicates that this was a very popular uh, method of burial of important elites in Greece. And there has been a discovery around Pylos where they have discovered a Mycenaean warrior. So make sure when you're in Athens that you get a chance to see the archaeological museum. And I'll show you a couple of other things here. There's the We're back in the museum again. And instead of looking at the dead, we're going to worry about the living. And here in the middle is the courtyard where they have a courtyard cafeteria, which is really, really fun. It's a nice place to get, get something to eat. You can see the garden. And in the garden, there is all sorts of, of different artifacts that you can enjoy. But it, it's, it's really nice because we spent the whole day here, actually twice. Sherry and I were on our cruise all around the Mediterranean. And then this past year, in December, it wasn't quite as much fun to sit out in the uh, <laughs> in the garden. As you're leaving the archaeological museum, there's another restaurant right at its base, and they have a covered building. And so we went in there this time and had lunch. So here's Sherry sitting, relaxing, and uh, my beer is in front of her, because I dearly love the Mythos beer that they, they serve in Greece. Hope you enjoyed our tour of the gold objects from Mycenae. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please uh, subscribe, give a comment, and if you like history, please come by historyaccordingtobob.com website where I do six podcasts a week on different topics in history, and there's all sorts of CDs and other things that you can see. So thank you very much.